thought Neil was coming today. I try this. No. <laughs> Don't tell him that. <clears throat> well, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for um, being here today to uh, recognize with all of us uh, uh, Fire Prevention Week and to also recognize the uh, Hawaii State Fire Council. Um, I'd like to first and foremost uh, welcome all of our fire chiefs, especially those who traveled from the neighbor islands. Thank you for joining us this morning. Also, I want to also uh, welcome the uh, State Fire Council as well as firefighters who have joined us on this uh, very special day. You know, every day, you know, firefighters uh, throughout our state, you know, put their lives on the line to protect all of our, our family, our friends, and our neighbors. And, um, you know, we're very appreciative of it. And I think, you know, like many other first responders in, in many cases, you know, People don't wake up in the morning saying, well, we're really glad the firefighters are there or the law enforcement officers or even, even EMS. But as we know, when an emergency situation arises, um, we're truly glad that all, all of you are there. So we certainly want to thank you for what you do. And I think it's very important that we spend time to uh, recognize all of your efforts. Um, this year, the uh, Fire Prevention Week has a theme, and uh, we're focusing on uh, kitchen fires, and I think it's important to let the public know that 44% of total residential fires in the past three years have been of this variety. So I think it's very important that we also uh, recognize that firefighters don't only put out fires, but equally important, spend a lot of time uh, educating uh, individuals in, in our community in, in terms of how to prevent uh, these things from happening. So. On behalf of the governor and I, uh, I'm really proud this morning to proclaim um, next week, October 6th to 12th, as Fire Prevention Week. Um, at this time, I think it'd be appropriate if I could have the fire chiefs come up. Caroline, how, how would you like to do this? <clears throat> we'll come up and we'll take, take some photos. Do we need to move this? Thank you. Oh, the fire guys are here. Oh, not too bad. <laughs> All the fire guys getting ready for the chili cook-off. Yeah. 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 <laughs> one year I had to be the judge. I told him I don't want to do that. Everybody else gets upset when you don't. <laughs> Only one winner, yeah? <laughs> Hard to choose. Oh, good chili. Yeah. He's camera shy. <laughs> I have proof that you're here. What should we look at? I don't know. They'll call it out. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, so if you folks want to say, we're going to just do a quick briefing for the media on the uh, federal, um, the government shutdown and give them a, a brief update. But by all means, I know if you folks have somewhere to be, I don't want to keep you. I, I promise I won't speak as long as Neil if you guys want to listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hey, we'll Derek. Right. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> okay. 
Okay, well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, or good morning, actually. It seems like the afternoon already, but um, I just want to uh, first uh, kind of take this opportunity. I know a lot of folks out there are, uh, are concerned about what's happening in Washington, D.C. with the, uh, uh, the government shutdown, and um, we just wanted to take this opportunity just to give a brief update as to what we have been doing here uh, within the administration to um, uh, continue to uh, obviously assess the, the situation. Um, we continue to uh, uh, monitor with our, our counterparts, with the uh, our, our congressional delegation. Uh, we're in close contact with them. Um, some of our administration have had communications with uh, staff in the White House as well. And of course, first and foremost, you know, we're really concerned about the thousands of uh, federal employees who, who have been furloughed so far and their, and their families. And as the, uh, 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 the situation continues and as, as it continues to be prolonged, um, of course, we're still concerned about how the effects would be on uh, state government and some of our operations, as well as the impact that it will have to our economy in the short as well as the long term. So, you know, the, yesterday the, um, the cabinet uh, had a uh, meeting with all of our department directors. Uh, we took that opportunity to really try to uh, have our different departments and agencies assess uh, the impact uh, that we're currently uh, going on. And so our finance director, actually, if, Calvert, if you don't mind coming up, Bruce. Um, uh, our finance director uh, uh, yesterday uh, had instructed uh, the different departments to really do an assessment and, and to try to evaluate, I guess, uh, by, 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 by a daily basis as well, a weekly basis, is what the impacts are um, to our state. And so um, over the next uh, uh, several days, next week as well, um, we will continue to meet with our department directors. Um, we are going to, um, uh, we're going to continue to assess and, and make sure that um, we get the information out to the public uh, as, as soon as we can. So um, that's kind of where we are now. Um, I've asked Calvert to come up here to answer any of the, the financial questions that uh, it may come up from the media, and then I'll answer the easy ones, and then Bruce Copa would take the difficult ones. So, <laughs> and I'll decide which ones they are. So, if you folks have any questions, we'd like to entertain them at this time. At what point does this start to cause real pain for the state? I know it's obviously an inconvenience for the federal workers involved, but have you guys had a point like if it goes two, three, four weeks in, then it starts to really impact state operations, or have you got to that point? Um, again, I think we're still trying to really evaluate what the total uh, financial impact is on a, on a daily basis. Um, obviously, every day that this continues uh, cr creates uh, additional concerns for us, um, not just short, short term, but long term as well. So uh, we're hopeful that uh, they can come to a resolution sooner than later. But obviously, we want to take a very proactive approach in making sure that uh, uh, we understand the full impacts and, and what necessary things we can do to make sure that we minimize the impacts on the residents of Hawaii. Well, again, we we're having the department agencies uh, contact a lot of their federal counterparts, assuming they're not furloughed, of course. Um, and so, and we've been in close contact with uh, our Hawaii delegation, our congressional delegation. Uh, Calvert has been spending some time with White House staff as well. Um, you know, one of the things that we're concerned about is the fact that if we are going to be uh, uh, reimbursed and if it, some of those uh, uh, the, the federal appropriations, if they go retroactive, uh, should the when the government uh, shutdown end. So, you know, we're we're still trying to do the evaluation this time. So is there any impact of the money flow federal to state in these last four days, or is that too soon to assess? Calvert. <clears throat> well, there is, there is an impact uh, over the last four days, since October 1st, for a number of programs, and there's minimal impacts in other areas. The state and their cabinet has actually made a, we've made a concerted effort to try and minimize the impact of state program services that are delivered to the public, which are funded by the federal government. So there hasn't been any uh, reduction in state programs that are federally funded. But as this shutdown becomes longer or is longer in duration, we don't know if the state can afford to be on that same uh, path and strategy. So this is a week-to-week -week assessment. Uh, every day that the state provides programs that are actually federally funded, but we're providing it with state resources, we are taking the risk of, um, of increasing our overall state costs. So there's, there could be a budgetary impact. Uh, right now, the state's content that we can continue to maintain public services in the interest of delivering some level of consistency and continuity for our, lo our public here locally in the state. But that's really a luxury right now, the state of Hawaii, uh, we've been prepared for this 
uh, and we can do it for the short term. What kind of programs are you talking about? Just give us a couple examples that could be affected later on. Well, the state budget has more than $2 billion worth of uh, federal fund supported programs, and it's everything from Medicaid, temporary assistance for needy family, rental assistance, uh, subsidized school lunches, uh, very social, various social services programs, Department of Health, Department of Human Services have a lot, Department of Education. So it's a very wide-ranging set of uh, programs that are federally funded, and they're all funded in different capacities uh, with federal funds. So uh, over the short term, it's not as big of an impact, but as the Lieutenant Governor has mentioned, one of the things that we are critically worried about is how long the duration of the shutdown lasts and whether or not the state will actually be made whole i.e. reimbursed from the federal government once the uh, feds are reinstated. This might be a question for the Lieutenant Governor. A lot of people, uninsured people here in Hawaii, are concerned about the website that went up this week, hawaiihealthconnector.com. What is the state doing right now to resolve some of the issues there? Yeah, you know, we, we certainly uh, apologize for, um, you know, the inconvenience. I, I think, you know, as in many parts of the country, um, I, I, you know, uh, as we kind of move forward and, and implement this new system, you know, there were some glitches uh, that, that, that did occur. I think part of the um, confusion was that, you know, folks were able to apply, but yet not quite shop the, the markets for um, specific packages and so forth. And so we've asked the Hawaii Health Connector and, and the folks there to, to really try to communicate with folks as to when that timeline might be, when they expect um, some of these uh, uh, di different features to be up and running and so we'll continue to work with them to try to resolve these issues. And when is the timeline? Did they give you a, an indication later this week? Or? No, they haven't given us a specific date. Uh, they said they're continuing to work on it, but we will try to get that information out to you as soon as possible. Any further questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks again.